Let's talk about minute ventilation and how I use it in my day-to-day -day practice as an ICU nurse. Minute ventilation, also sometimes called minute volume, and I like to abbreviate it MV, is your tidal volume times your respiratory rate. So let's say your patient is breathing 500 milliliters per breath times 20 breaths per minute. You're going to have a minute ventilation of about 10,000 milliliters per minute. We don't usually write it in milliliters, so we'll convert it to liters, so which is about 10 liters per minute. Okay, but why is minute ventilation actually important? Let me tell you. Let's say we have a patient that has this AVG. So their pH is 7.21, their CO2 is 55, and their bicarb is 23. So we already know that this pH is low, so we have an acidosis. This CO2 is high because normal CO2 is between 35 and 45, and our bicarb is normal because normal bicarb is between 22 and 26. So we have some sort of respiratory acidosis going on here, and our patient is on these vent settings. They are on PRVC mode with a rate of 16. Our tidal volume is 450, PEEP is 5, and FiO2 is 40%. So if we calculate this patient's average minute ventilation, we do 16, so that's the respiratory rate, times the total volume of 450 gives us about 7.2 liters per minute. So when we're looking at these vent settings and we're looking at this AVG, what can we do to correct this patient's acidosis? Well, we know we need to fix their CO2 because we know that the CO2 is driving this acidosis. So how do we fix CO2 with a vent? we can adjust the minute ventilation. We know in order to lower CO2, we have to make our patient blow off that CO2. Well, when they're hooked up to the ventilator, the two ways that you can help your patient blow off more CO2 is one, by increasing their respiratory rate, or two, increasing their tidal volume. Here's a little example of that. Let's say we increased our patient's respiratory rate to 20, but we kept the tidal volume the same of 450. That is going to make our minute ventilation about nine liters per minute. And let's say we keep our respiratory rate the same at 16, but we increase the tidal volume to 500. That is gonna make our minute ventilation about eight liters per minute. Now making these adjustments is going to be provider-based. So of course, if we get this ABG, we see these vent settings, we can go to our provider and say, hey, this is the gas, these are my vent settings. Would you like to make any changes? But in order to get our patient to blow off more CO2, we need to get them to blow more air, which would be to increase their minute ventilation by modifying their respiratory rate or their tidal volume. This is a very basic synopsis. There's a lot of other factors that can go into this, but this is a good foundation to help you get started when you're looking at your patient's ABGs and comparing it to the vent settings. Always check your patient's minute ventilation. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.